Amen, amen, amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of right here with us. your love. Filling us with your love. And for these blessings. And for these blessings. We lift our hearts in praise. We will lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt we know. Without a doubt we know that we have been when we shall leave this place. One more time, chorus from the beginning, sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Heavenly Dove. Sweet Heavenly Dove. Stay right here with us. us with your love. Filling us with your love. And for these blessings. And for these blessings. We will lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt we'll know. Without a doubt we'll know that we have been when we shall leave this place. Hallelujah. 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 Everyone, please stand as we open in prayer. Please, everyone, please stand. Hallelujah. Our heads bow. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you once again for this day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us the chance, Lord God, to come into your house once again, Lord God, and just give you praise that you so deserve, Lord God. You've done so much for us. Just, just talking just for today, Lord, you've done so much 
before us today, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord God. We want to come into your house, Lord God, and praise you, Lord God, for everything that you have done, Lord God. As we look back over our life, Lord God, and we see everything that you have brought us through, everything that you have done for us, Lord God. We thank you for it. We praise you for it, Lord God. And we thank you for the word that you have for us today, Lord God. We thank you for this service, Lord God, for the speaker that you have brought to us, Lord God. We thank you for everything that you're going to do in this service, Lord God. And we ask, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God, for 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 the, the, the people that we're going to come and get baptized, Lord God. The people that's going to get this Holy Ghost, Lord God. The people that's going to get refreshed and with people that get whatever we need, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God for what you're going to do, Lord God, tonight and throughout this revival. Lord God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This time, Sanctuary Choir. We're going to praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we can't stop praising his name because he's done so much for us. Amen. Hallelujah. If you confess the Lord, call him up. 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 Hallelujah. If you confess the Lord, call him up. If you believe that the power of God is the Holy Ghost, call him up. And tell him what you want. If you confess the Lord, call him up. If you confess the Lord, call him up. If you confess the Lord, call him up. If you believe that the power of God is the Holy Ghost, call him up and tell him what you want. Delight thyself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. Even though sometimes you stumble, even though sometimes you fall, call him up and tell him what you want. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Praising his name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop. 
I will bless the Lord. 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 He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done great things for me. 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 He has done great things for me, so I. Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. First night of our revival. Y'all should be excited. Y'all excited? Hallelujah. We got a good preacher. We got a good preacher. Amen. We got a good preacher. Amen. Now, he's not as hard as I am. Now, notice I put ass hard. All right. So he's, he's, he's got a little, at least I think he might. He might surprise me now. Because he knows y'all can handle it. Amen. Can y'all handle it? Yeah. All right. Don't, don't, don't get scared. <laughs> All right. It's offering time. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited about the revival. Amen. We got pastor, brother, uh, Sovereign Bishop, uh, Willie Phillips, going to be with us for the next four nights. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Him and I done been around the block together. Amen. Yeah. All right. I ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to let him do all the talking. Y'all know me. I get started. Amen. But I'm glad. I'm glad for the revival. He's got his lovely wife with us, with him tonight. Amen. 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 They, they country folks, so don't worry about them. They country folks. Don't, don't worry about them. Now, this, this is the gentleman that, that blessed us with this carpet, just in case y'all are interested. Amen. 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 Yeah, you know he got to be a good friend. I called him up at the last minute. And all he could say, he said, Brother John, why you call me at the last minute? You won't copy there in two days, huh? Then I told him I ain't got no money. <laughs> I know he was on the phone. I know he probably scratched his head like, last minute, then you going to tell me you're broke too? Wait a minute. But he made it happen. Amen. So we thank the Lord for him. Amen. We thank the Lord for him. Amen. So y'all need to give. Y'all know we like to leave our, our preachers with good offerings, so please be liberal. Amen. I know most of y'all getting paid on the 15th, so I know if I don't get a lot tonight, I'll get it in a couple of days. Amen. <laughs> Let us stand. But I know y'all are good givers. I know. I don't, I don't worry about y'all. I just be messing with you. I know y'all are going to give. You've been trained. My pastor trained me, and I've trained you all. And God keep on blessing us. Amen. Amen. So when we put you in the hands of our choir, they're going to come back with an offering selection and one more after that. Amen. Then after that, I get up and we'll introduce the speaker for the evening. Amen. Amen. So follow the directions of the ushers. Amen. Everybody standing. One, two, three. Three. Every day with Jesus. Sweeter than the day 
Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. I didn't say say it. I said shout it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Is he good? Is he good? Open your Bibles real quick to remind y'all what our scripture is for this month. This month is about love. love. And I thought about that as he was singing the song, We Can Change the World. What is our motto? What's one of our motto? We're going to do what? Turn this world upside down. Amen. We can do it. We can change it. We can change it. But we can't change it being carnal. We can't change it being carnal. Matthew 5, 46 and 46. 45 and 40, I'm sorry, 46 and 47. Amen. Everybody got it? I'm not preaching. I just want to remind y'all what the, what the scripture is. This is what we got to think about all week. You know, we're in a consecration period and everything. So keep this in your mind. 46 and 47. Read it. What does it say? For if ye love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publican the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not the publican. So, listen, what God is saying, we can't be like everybody else. If you love them that love you, you, act, you ain't no better than a sinner. 
but we are not sinners. We are saints, right? Amen. We got a preacher that's coming to us tonight. Amen. I, I just highlighted a couple of things, and I do that throughout the week. He was born in Shreveport, and he came to California. He came to California, and then he met his wife. Amen. And after he met his wife, he went back to Louisiana and started a church. Amen. Then he went out there and stirred up some ruckus. Then he came back to L.A. to stir up some more ruckus. Amen. So let us stand to our feet and receive our speaker on this evening in the person of Suffragan Bishop Willie Phillips. Amen. Come on, shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> get to get some of this in the morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Let's pray right quick. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be here today. We know that you're going to deliver a word to us corporately tonight. Whatever the message is for us individually, we thank you in advance for sending it here tonight through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Uh, I've been looking forward to this. I haven't preached in a couple of years. I've been on a hiatus and... Uh, so I'm glad to be here. I was shocked when Brother John asked me. I'm just going to call him Brother John. Uh, when he asked us to come out, and uh, my wife, that's my, she's the honey in my dew. She's the water in my melon. The hot sauce in my taco. And the filet in my gumbo. We'll just stand up, Sister Phillips. This is my wife. I don't know why she's still with me. She's been with me about 40 years, and, and now I can't get rid of Whatever, even if I wanted to, which I don't. We came to Home Assembly in 1992. I was on my way to prison for the second time at that time, as some of you may know. And uh, we were riding down uh, Adelaide Boulevard, and I heard a radio broadcast, and Bishop Benton was preaching, and uh, it just got captivated. My wife and I were in the truck. And as we were driving by, he says, we're in revival, and if you're in the neighborhood, uh, come on in and catch us live. Uh, when he, as he was talking, uh, I just pulled over to the side of the road and, and stopped, and when I looked up, we were blocking the driveway to home assembly. And I had to back up, and my wife and I got out, and we walked in, and, and I had been raised by my father to be an atheist, and I was 42 years old at the time, didn't believe that there even was a God, and and my wife, uh, she was kind of Lutheran. She didn't know anything. We didn't know anything about salvation. But uh, because she had gotten involved with a gangster, and, and, and she was kind of perturbed, and when we walked in, we looked at each other, and we were trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Because as soon as we got in there, it felt as though we were walking in, in, to, in a jar of olive oil. Everything seemed to be in slow motion. We walked in, and we sat on the back row. And as I heard Bishop Benton preaching, something began to happen down on the inside of me. And uh, when he got through preaching, we sat there, and, and uh, Brother Marcus Jackson and, and uh, LeBlanc and all of those were trying to tell us to get out and it's time to go. I said, I'm not going nowhere until I talk to that old man. <laughs> and uh, they tried to put us out. I said, I'm not going nowhere until I talk to him. So Bishop Benton finally sent him to uh, get me and he took me inside, and I went in, and I sat down at his desk. He never did look up. And he said, what can I do for you, uh, young man? I said, look, I want to get saved, but I don't think I'm good enough to be saved. He said, well, you ain't. And uh, he, looked, he looked back down, and whatever he was doing, he was fiddling around. And I got up and walked, and when I walked over to the door, and when I opened the door, he said, but he'll save you anyway. And that night, Marcus Jackson took Sharon and I down in Jesus' name, and we began to tarry. We began to find out what was going on, and I was bringing Sister Phillips back, and two weeks later, we were in the library tarrying, and, and she got filled with the Holy Ghost and started speaking in tongues, and I got mad. I said, I'm the one that brought you by here and need to fill you up with the Holy Ghost. I stopped coming to church. I stopped coming, 
And she, she continued to come. And Sister Ben called me one night, and she's like, what, uh, about two weeks later, she's like, why don't you come on back out? So I came back out, and I was tearing there for a couple of weeks. Nothing was happening. And I went by uh, Elder Fitzpatrick's house one night, and I was selling him some carpet, and he was taking a long time. And I said, look, man, I'm fixing to go to church and get the Holy Ghost. He said, yeah, brother Willie, you mean you're fixing to go and do some tearing? I said, no, I'm going to get the Holy Ghost tonight. As soon as I get there, I'm going to get the Holy Ghost. I don't know what got into me. And so I, I went, and Sister Markham was on the floor, and, and, and it was a prayer meeting or something was going on. And, and I, I ran down on the floor, and I said, look, Sister Markham, uh, come on, let's go over here. We were out there in the little kid's library. I said, let's go out here so I get the Holy Ghost. She said, oh, brother, really, you going to tarry again? I said, no, I want to go over here. I'm going to get the Holy Ghost. And she's like, go on up in the balcony and start tarrying. And then when I get through, uh, I come out there and tarry with you a while. I said, no, nah, I'm going to get the Holy Ghost. She said, bro, go on up in the balcony and start tarrying up there. So I went up in the back. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I was tearing the church. I was so loud. She said, oh, Lord, come on. Uh, 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 Sister Collins, let's go out here and take this, take this fool out here and, and, and get him out of here because he's tearing the whole church up. We went out there. In the, in the, in the little kids library, had the little bitty chairs, and we sat down on the chairs, and, and Sister Collins would start reading the scripture. I said, you don't need to read no scripture. I'm fixing to get filled with the Holy Ghost. So as soon as we grabbed hands, I started speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. And I got up. Hallelujah. And, uh, I ran into the church, and I came back to the vestibule, and Bishop Ben was up preaching by that time. When I stepped in the back door, he looked, and he said, Brother Willie, you got something to tell us. I came down, and I told him that I, I had the Holy Ghost. And he said, how you know? And I, I just started speaking in tongues and everything. And we had, a, we had a good time. And everything since then has been on and up with, with the Lord. Uh, my, daddy, my daddy died died last year at the age of 97. And Sister Phillips and I, I'm just going to take my time a little bit because we got four, we got four days. So I just want to... I uh, get a little information so y'all know who y'all dealing with up in here. And uh, so we went back. Uh, we went back. I went back to Louisiana after I got saved because I wanted to get my daddy saved. He raised me up to be an atheist. He didn't believe in God, and I didn't believe in all of that crackpot stuff that was in my Bible, in my mama's Bible, rather. And she was dealing with Reverend Ike, and she was getting all these prayer cloths and had me buying all of this stuff, and nothing wasn't happening with it, and I thought it was really crazy, but when I really got saved, for real, and I went down in Jesus' name and got filled with the Holy Ghost, I went back because I wanted to get my daddy saved. It took five years, I was talking to him, I was preaching, he was watching me, and, and he didn't believe anything that was going on, hallelujah, and then uh, that was even 79 when I got there, and then at the age of 84, he said, okay, boy, I've been watching you, and I want what you got. So at the age of 84, he came out, he, uh, 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 and I took him down in Jesus' name, and he went home. It was a Wednesday night. He called me that Thursday morning, and at the time, I say my dad was 84 years old, never believed in God. He had been a womanizer, alcoholic, all of this kind of stuff. And, and uh, uh, he, he called me, and he said, boy, I got down on my knees last night, and I did something I never did. He said, I started praying to God by myself, all by myself. And he said, right in the middle of the prayer, I stopped I got up and I went and brushed my teeth and I went back and I finished praying to God. I say, I'm listening. I said, well, okay, why you got up and go brush your teeth, Daddy? He said, well, it's the first time I talked to him. I didn't want to talk to him with bad breath. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, 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 and it, it, you know, it took a couple of years, but later on I heard him speaking in tongues. At the age of 97, uh, he had cancer, the same kind of cancer that I got. I got it from him because it ran in the family. And, and uh, so he was in hospice and uh, we were in the hospital it was about he had about a week left he died a week after this he was in the hospice so when he first got in there you know they send those social workers around the psychological analysts and they was trying to figure out what was wrong with daddy if you know and they came in and they say uh well how you doing mr phillips he said i'm in hospice well he said well what do you think about president trump he said i don't my daddy was kind of kind of short and to the point he's kind of funny and they said, uh, what does that sign on the wall over there say? He says, uh, no TV after 10 p.m. Then she looked over at him, and she said, well, can you read? He said, boy, now they sent her down here to see if I got any sense. He had just read the sign. And, 
And so she closed the book and she said, "Well, ain't nothing wrong with you." So I tell I tell I tell a lot of jokes and 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 you know it kind of runs in the family. So if you see me saying something crazy up in here, I got it from my daddy. Uh, I got the cancer that's in my body now. I got it from my daddy, and 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 my daddy uh, uh, has a bad habit. He'll tell you what he think right off the bat, and and so that's what I'm gonna do tonight. All right. I like your theme, love for souls. So let's just dive into this so we can get through it. John told me I had until about twelve o'clock, but I'm gonna let y'all early. We're gonna get out about eleven thirty. All right. Hallelujah. Y'all think I'm joking, but I ain't. <laughs> Matthew chapter 22. If you don't say go ahead, if you not say hold up. Go ahead, the pastor said. In Matthew chapter 22, uh, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees are messing with Jesus. They're trying to get him trapped, and, 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 and they're asking him questions, hoping, hoping that he would give them a wrong answer, hoping that he would say something that was against their law and what their prophets had taught them, so they were trying to trip him up. You know, sometimes we ask God questions, and we really don't want the answer. We, we ask the pastor questions, we really don't want to hear the truth. We just want, to, want them to say something so we can go back and start talking about them behind their back, so they can say to their face, you don't know what you're talking about. And, and so in verse uh, 36, uh, some of the Sadducees, one of, the, one of them said, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? If you dare say, go ahead. Yeah. Verse 37, Jesus said unto him, the Lord thy God, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the pastor just said something. He said that you're talking about love here. And, 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 and so we're going to, I'm just going to deal with the first word for a while, thou. Put your name in there. Sharon, you shall love the Lord your God. Uh, whatever your name is, you shall. That's a commandment. Now, God's not going to tell you to do anything if he's not already equipped you to do it. Amen. My question to you tonight is, who are you? Who is that thou? Uh, who is that John? Uh, who is that Mary? Who is that Sharon? Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1, and we'll talk about it a little bit. While you're on your way there, I'm going to stop over in Isaiah. You go to John 1 and 26. I'm just going to stop and throw in something from Isaiah uh, chapter 45, verse 18. I know you're well taught here, so I know you're very familiar with this passage of Scripture. With this verse, it says, For thus said the Lord that created the heavens, God himself said this, God himself created the heavens, and he's the one that formed the earth, and he made it. He established the earth, and he created it not to be empty, not to be void. He formed it to be inhabited, and he informed it to be inhabited by people. Keeping that in mind, let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. And, and if you want a title for the message tonight, uh, uh, you can just say, it runs in the family. Say, it runs in the family. Some people got cancer, you know, and it runs in the family. It's a lot of families, they have have breast cancer, and, and from generation to generation, some of the ladies, uh, uh, you find that they have breast cancer. From generation to generation to generation, you find that some people have high blood pressure. You find that some people have a lot of PhDs and master's degrees because education is something that uh, runs in the family. It's very important. They might not have any moral character. They might not have a good value system, but they're educated. Nothing wrong with that, but we're just trying to establish that there are certain things that runs in the family. Sometimes, hallelujah, uh, economically, you find from generation to generation to generation that people are on welfare. And then welfare is a good thing, but some people abuse the system. I'm just trying to establish that there are certain things that run in certain families. Hallelujah. Say it runs in the family. I go, I go to the doctor. When I first started going to the doctor, when I found out I had cancer, I'm there. I'm the one that's sick, right? 
they start asking me all kind of questions about my mama and them and my grandmama and them. Anybody in your family have cancer? Anybody have heart trouble? I said, look, doc, I'm the one sick. Why are you asking me all these questions about them? He said, I'm trying to find out what runs in your family. All right? Uh, uh, verse 26, Genesis chapter 1. Follow along as I read. Hallelujah. And we're going to get an idea uh, uh, established here about what God was up to. He already said that he formed, he created the heavens and he formed the earth to be inhabited and he informed it, uh, uh, he formed it to be inhabited by people. Uh, uh, and God said, uh, uh, let us make man. Now who's he talking to? He talking to somebody else? Is something wrong with God? Is he, is he talking to himself? Let us make man and we want to make him in our demons, uh, uh, in our image. Uh, I want him to have the same character that I have. I want him to have the same value system that I have. I want him to have the same principles that I have. I, I want him to uh, 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 have the same morals that I have. I want the culture that he's raised up in, and I'm going to make him have kids later on, and I want the same culture uh, uh, that's, that's in, in his family that he's going to uh, perpetuate to his kids down through the generations. Hallelujah. That starts with him. I want him to have the same passions that I have. So when he's talking about Demoth and he said, I want him to be in my likeness. Hallelujah. I want him to think like I think. I want him to walk like like I walk, hallelujah. I want him to love who I love, hallelujah. And by the way, God loves everybody, hallelujah. He don't just love the church. It says God so loved the world, hallelujah. He loved the everybody, hallelujah. And it doesn't make any difference, hallelujah, if your mama was raped, hallelujah. If you if you came here, you don't know who your daddy is, hallelujah. God loves you. Don't make no difference what you look like. Don't make no difference how tall you are or how short you are, hallelujah. God says he made this earth and he made it to be inhabited by people. People, hallelujah. Don't let anybody tell you, hallelujah, that you're not special because you are a designer's original. Say, I am a designer's original. Say it. Hallelujah. God created you, hallelujah, and he made you just the way you are, hallelujah. He put something down in your spirit, hallelujah, and he wants you to do something for him, hallelujah, that nobody can do for him exactly the way that you do it. You do it, so God made you, and he made you for a reason, hallelujah. Say, I'm special, hallelujah. I'm handmade, hallelujah. I'm no accident, hallelujah. God put me here, hallelujah, and as long as I'm here, he's got something for me to do, and I'm going to find out. What it is. Give a lot of him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Not only did he make uh, this man in his image, but he made it in his likeness. Hallelujah. He made him in his teeslam. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 we look the way God would look if God was a man. You know how I know? Because when Jesus became a man, he came down here. He didn't have four legs like no dog. <laughs> he didn't have no wings like no eagle. Hallelujah. God said, I want to, if I was a man, if I was a person, if I was tangible, if I was more than just a spirit, this is the way that I want. I look like my daddy. Hallelujah. I walk like my daddy. Hallelujah. I talk like my daddy. Hallelujah. I tell jokes like my daddy. Hallelujah. When somebody see me coming from a distance, they can say, that's Dan's boy. Hallelujah. So I want this man, hallelujah, to not only have the same character that I have physically, I want him to look the way that I would look if I was a man. Hallelujah. So he made him in his own teeth for and he made him in his own demons in his likeness and in his image. Hallelujah. And he says, and let them, talking about people, have dominion. I like the way he says he made man, but he's talking about anthropos. He's talking about the whole human race, but he says man. And let them have dominion over the fish, over the fowl, over the cattle, and over all the earth. And and over everything that creepeth upon the earth. The only thing that he didn't list there was other men. You know, when we get a lot of power, when we get dominion, the first thing that we want to go and dominate is other people. Did you notice that God didn't put that in the list? Hallelujah. Because he wants all of us, hallelujah, to be dominant. He wants all of us to have dominion. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, he gave it to all of us. So we're supposed to dominate the birds and the fish and the cows and the snakes and everything like that. But we're not supposed to dominate each other. Hallelujah. That's not on the list. Y'all hear me? Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. 
the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Now, that's a biological thing, male and female. And don't tell nobody I told you this, but you don't have to be. You can be a male and don't be a man. If there any man in the house and you know that you're a male man, say, I'm a male man. Hallelujah. Any male man in the house, you can be born a male. Hallelujah. But you have to, you have to do some living to become a man. Hallelujah. I'm a male. Say, I'm a male man. I'm a created man. Hallelujah. Uh, and then he made females. He created both of them. Uh, uh, I ran into, uh, I used to have a problem back, I told somebody to tell you, I used to have a problem with, with, with gay people. You know, back in the day when I was, I was coming up, I, I, you know, I, I, you know I, I don't feel you know, too easy with gayism. I love gay people, but I hate gayism, you know, today. Hallelujah. I'm just saying this. I don't know, if that, I don't know what y'all teach around here. Hallelujah. I ran into one of them a few years ago, and he said, look. You talking all that stuff, Mr. Bishop, and, 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 and everything. He said, I was born like this. I, I said, that's why you need to be born again. When I was born, I was a thief and a liar. Hallelujah. And I had to get born again before I stopped doing it. Hallelujah. If you are, if you're born, okay, I'm not going to say if you're born gay or not, but if you are born gay, that's why you must be born again. Jesus said that you must be born again. And he's no respect that person. It don't make no difference what kind of sin you have. You must be born again. If it's a lie, Jesus told it, and he's not a man that he can lie. Yeah. And you can go tell Caitlin and RuPaul and all of them that's been slicing and dicing and hallelujah and cutting stuff off and packing stuff in, hallelujah. If you ain't got no room, use a male. I don't know where that came from. Hallelujah. I love everybody. We love all souls. Jesus loved everybody. Hallelujah. He says, come as you are, but you can't stay as you are. Hallelujah. You can come up in here in hot pants and, 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 and a G-string. Hallelujah. I'm pretty sure he won't turn you around, but you can't stay that way. Come as you are. Hallelujah. And if the right word is coming down through here, and if God is teaching the right thing, hallelujah, and when the Holy Ghost comes down through here, you'll change. If you ain't got no room for no room, then use a male. You might not be a man, but use a male. And God blessed them, the male and the female, and God said unto them, be fruitful. Hallelujah. I'd like to see Caitlin and them have a baby. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Hallelujah. Conquer it. Hallelujah, and dominate it, subdue, hallelujah, and have dominion over it. Uh, I'm kind of hard on the man. Uh, you know, they say men are the foundation. You know, you, you, a lot of people go around taking pictures of buildings and taking pictures of houses. They take a picture of the walls, and they take a picture of the windows, and they take a picture of the landscape, but I never see anybody taking pictures of the foundation because you can't see it. But it holds up everything. Men, male men, we are the foundation of the family. <laughs> we are the foundation of the church, other than Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and the original apostles, hallelujah. But that doesn't just mean that we hold up everything. It also means that we're supposed to uphold everything. We're supposed to uphold the bloodstained banner. And dominion means that you have authority, hallelujah. But it also means that you have responsibility, hallelujah. We want the power, we want the authority, but you have responsibility to carry the weight of the whole family. Us male men, we have the responsibility, hallelujah, to provide for everybody up in the family. We have the responsibility, hallelujah, to pay the child support for the kids that should be up in our family, but we go out there and we get wayward, hallelujah, and we have those kids out there. Dominion means not only authority and power, hallelujah, but it means responsibility, hallelujah. A policeman can have a badge, hallelujah, that means he has authority, hallelujah, but when he got that gun on his hip, that means he has power, hallelujah, and then he's armed and, he, uh, and everybody that's armed, no, it doesn't mean that they're dangerous, hallelujah. Some people are armed and dangerous, hallelujah. They got the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. They know the word, hallelujah, but they want 
pull the trigger. Anybody in here armed and dangerous? If you're armed and dangerous, that means you got the authority, you got the power, you got the badge, and you got the gun, and you ain't afraid to pull the trigger. Hallelujah. If somebody ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing, no. if somebody's not living the way they're supposed to be living, hallelujah, you don't want to run them away, hallelujah, but you don't want them to stay under false pretenses, hallelujah. You have to tell them what thus said the Lord, hallelujah. If somebody's standing out there on the street with a sawed off shotgun from the blow your head off, I'm not going to come up here and pat you on the back and tell you everything is going to be all right. I'm going to say, somebody out there trying to kill you, hallelujah, and you need to come in here, you need to go another way. Anybody in your arm that names? I'm a male man. If you own the names, you tell people the truth. If somebody walks up to you and asks you to pray for them, stop what you're doing and pray for them right then. I'm going to pray for you. You know you ain't going to pray for them right then. Be responsible. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be nice tonight. Be, be, be nice. Be nice. Will you? Don't. Don't pull the trigger. <laughs> Don't let him have it. Don't do like you do back there God's way. Uh, uh, you know, John might not want you to come back. They got you for four nights, hallelujah. If you go up there and be old Willie, hallelujah, they might not come back Tuesday night, hallelujah. Wednesday night, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whatever. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we on... The subject of men, I want you to watch how God does this thing. God, God, God's a bad dude. I mean, when I started trying to preach over at home, I still, I still haven't gotten it down right, but my first sermon there was, uh, and I got up and I bombed big time. And John was out in the audience, and a few days later, I talked to John, and the title of my message is, Why Are You Still Here? You remember that? And then, and, 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 and then, and then, I, I, I really messed it up. And after a while, John left. And 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 then one side said he said that message was for me. Hallelujah. Why are you still here? Who are you? Uh, 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 uh. Watch how God does this thing with a man. He created a man. Hallelujah. And then he made him a male. So he made a male man. That's what he did. So verse 27 of chapter 1 tells us what he did. Let's drop down over in chapter 2 in Genesis verse 7, and he's going to tell us how he did what he did. And the Lord God formed man. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a made man. Men say, I'm a made man. Women say, I'm a made woman. I'm a made male. I'm a made uh, female. Uh, and, he, and he formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Say, I'm a soul man. I'm a male man. Hallelujah. I'm a made man, and I'm a soul man. That's why I love souls, because I'm a soul man. Hallelujah. I got God's character on the inside of me. I got his passions on the inside of me. I got his value system on the inside of me, and it's running in my family. Hallelujah. And all things being the way that God wants them to be, all of these characteristics, all of this character, all of these passions are going to be passed on to my offspring. When I'm fruitful, hallelujah, I'm, I'm going to, my kids are going to be soul men and soul women. Hallelujah. And they're going to be lovers of Christ. Hallelujah. Because I love him. Hallelujah. Everything that's down on my DNA. Say it's in my nature. Everything that's in my nature is going to be in the nature of my offspring. Hallelujah. So I'm a soul man. That's what Sam and Dave said. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Uh, 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 God's DNA is on the inside of him because when he breathed the ruach on the inside of him, hallelujah, God's DNA went down on the inside of him, hallelujah, but God formed him with his hands. He didn't form the birds with his hand. He didn't form the fish with his hand. He didn't form the, the universe with his hand, hallelujah, but he got down and he formed man with his hand and said, God's fingerprints are all over man. God's DNA is all on the inside of man, hallelujah, so when you're walking around, hallelujah, people start looking at, I got God's fingerprints all on the outside of me. Hallelujah. I'm his in, made in his image. I got his character on the inside of me. It's in my nature. Hallelujah. I can't help it. Hallelujah. 
sometimes I get excited, hallelujah, when I start seeing the move of God, hallelujah, because his ruach is on the inside of me, hallelujah. His nature is on the inside of me, hallelujah. When I see people out there, hallelujah, and they don't love God the way that God loves them, hallelujah, I get a burning down on the inside of my soul, hallelujah, and I don't know why, but I start reaching out for him, hallelujah, because that's because his likeness is on the inside of me, hallelujah. When people start talking about how funny I look and everything, I say, well, put me up on that microscope because I got God's fingerprints all over me, hallelujah. I'm a soul man. And that means that I am a spirit. I've already said that I have a soul and I live in a body, hallelujah. But all three of these come together and there are three that bear witness in heaven, hallelujah. The Father, the Logos, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Son uh, and the Holy Ghost and these three are one, hallelujah. You can't separate the spirit from the soul and the body, hallelujah, from dividing the Son and nobody can do that but the word of God, hallelujah. But there are three, hallelujah. The soul man, hallelujah. The spirit man and the body man and these three are one, hallelujah. I'm just like my daddy, hallelujah. He's three and he's one, hallelujah. He's only one. I'm three and I'm one. I'm only one, hallelujah. And God says, I'm going to form them. I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to get a spirit, hallelujah, and I'm going to breathe into his nostrils and he's going to become a soul. That's why the angels are mad at us, hallelujah, because they don't have a soul, hallelujah. Angels don't have a soul. Animals don't have a soul, hallelujah. But God made him a soul man, hallelujah. He put that in on the inside of a body, hallelujah. I made a new thing. That's why we can sing a song that the angels can't sing, hallelujah. No angels have been redeemed, hallelujah. No angels have a soul. We're the only ones that's three and one just like my daddy, hallelujah. I got it from my daddy, hallelujah. I'm a threefold, uh, uh, just like the Godhead, hallelujah. The fullness of the Godhead dwelled in Jesus' bodily. I'm made on the same style that he's made on. Say, I'm a soul man. It's in my nature. I can't, I got the can't help it. And the Lord God, verse 8, we're just moving on down through here. I'm trying to tell you, it says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all. I'm trying to teach you what God says, who you are. A lot of people don't know who, we, who you are. We don't know where we're from. We don't know why we're here. We, we don't know what we are capable of doing. And we don't know where we're going after we leave here. When these four days are over, we're going to answer those five questions. I'm a male man. I'm a female woman. I'm just being on the man. Hallelujah. But the same thing go for the women. You know, put the females in there. It's a man's world, but it wouldn't be nothing without a woman or a girl. And, and I don't agree with Beyonce. We rule the world like girls. I, 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 mm -mm. I don't believe that. We're going to see what God has to say about it in a minute. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant. You know, you know here's another thing. You have to be careful when you start telling people about what, uh, 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 you ever seen an acorn going to a gardening school to learn how to grow into an oak tree? It's in the nature. If you put an acorn in the ground and, and put some water on it and, and some time pass, it's going to automatically become an oak tree. Uh, I've never seen no fish going to no swimming school to try to learn how to fish. It's in his nature. That's what they do. That's what they do. Birds, hallelujah, they just fly. They don't never go to flying school, hallelujah. And once we find out who we are and how we are and why we are and what we're supposed to be doing, we're going to find out what's in our nature, hallelujah, and we're just going to do it automatically, hallelujah. You don't have to teach no fish how to swim, and you don't have to teach no, you don't have to teach no saint how to love one another, hallelujah. Once you realize that it's down in your nature and you got the can't help it, hallelujah. Shut up, William. It's in my nature. Uh, 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 God is love. If you want to know what love looks like, <laughs> woo. Boy, slow down, Willie. I'm getting ahead of myself. So everyone's in the family. Let's jump down to verse 15. As you want me to say, go ahead. And the Lord God took the man. Uh, uh, he put him to work. 
He put him to work. I'm a male man. I'm a made man. I'm a spirit man. Uh -huh. I'm a soul man. Now I'm a working man. It's the difference between working. I'm going to drop this in on you, and I'm not going to charge you nothing for it tonight. I might have to get something for it tomorrow night, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret right here. Hallelujah. It's the difference between your work and your job. I'm a carpet layer. That's my job. I can get fired. I can get laid off. Hallelujah. But my work is doing what God made me to do. He made you to do something. Is that right? I can get fired off my job. Hallelujah. Uh, I can get laid. I can, I can become an emeritus bishop. Hallelujah. But I'm a preacher. Hallelujah. That's my work. Hallelujah. I go around spreading the word of God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to do my work. The work of an acorn is to become an oak tree. The work of a bird is to swim. Hallelujah. The work of a saint of God is to lift something. The work of a saint of God is to love somebody. You got a job. I can get laid off of my job, hallelujah, but I can't get laid off of my work. What's your work? What does God, what does God put you here to do, hallelujah? If you're a deacon, then start deacon. If you're a singer, then start singing, hallelujah. You can get laid off of your job, you can get fired, hallelujah, but whatever your work is for the Lord, that's what is inherent in you, and that's what God wants you to do. Say, I'm a working man. What's your work? Fire me if you want to. I'm still gonna come. I'm a, I'm a prayer warrior. I'm still gonna be out there on the main line fighting and, 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 and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what's your work? God done gave you some work to do. Ain't got nothing to do with a job. Ain't nothing wrong with a job, but it's different between a job and a work. On a job, you get employed. Now, your work, you get deployed. I'm deployed right now. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all hear what God's saying to you? All of some of y'all, y'all went to work today, but you out here tonight, you went to your job. So I went to my job today, but I'm putting work in tonight. I'm magnifying the Lord. I'm praising him. I'm worshiping him. I'm assembling myself together, hallelujah, to put the devil on notice, hallelujah. Uh, uh, we're giving the devil a black eye tonight, hallelujah, but we're lifting up the name of Jesus, hallelujah. This is our work. It ain't got nothing to do with your job. Say, so I'm a working man. I'm a working woman. Hallelujah. I'm a working girl. I'm a working boy. In the morning, I'm going to get up and go to my job. Hallelujah. But while you're at your job, you still can be doing your work. You are deployed out there where you are employed. Hallelujah. You're supposed to let them see Jesus alive in you. Hallelujah. I'm putting my work in. You better watch me. Hallelujah. I might be on my way to the cross. Hallelujah. But if the woman with an issue of blood come up with me, I'm going to stop and do my work. And I'm going to tell you something else about Jesus. He never preached a sermon on healing neither. But he went around healing folks. He never preached a sermon on delivering. Hallelujah. But he delivered folks all the time. He never preached a sermon on, on how you're supposed to feed folks. But he always he fed the 5,000. He fed the 3,000. He was putting work in. What's your work? On my way to do my job. I got to get up on the cross and die. Hallelujah. To save all humanity. But on my way there, I'm still putting my work in. I can raise the dead on my way over here. I can lay hands on the sick. Hallelujah. I can lay hands on people and they can get filled with the Holy Ghost. That's my work on my way to the job. I ain't stealing no pencils on the job. I ain't stealing no butter and I ain't stealing no eggs. Because I'm working while I'm on my job. Y'all can look at me funny if you want to, but I got a car out there. My wife knows how to drive. I'm going to get a body here when it's all over with. Hallelujah. You got a responsibility. Dominion. He wants you to go out there and dominate. When demons come up, he wants you to slay them and dominate them and put them under your foot. Submit to the Lord. Then resist the devil. And he'll go boogity boogity every time. Because I'm a working man. That's okay. That's okay. No, no, no. Unleash the cracking, boy. Verse 18. Are you with me? Say, go ahead. Let me read. Y'all listening. I know John got y'all reading. That's a good thing. Hallelujah. But I want y'all to just sit back and relax. And I'm going to read to you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I just want to show you some stuff that God showed me. And this stuff that I'm giving y'all tonight, this is my private stash. 
I'm not preaching prepared sermons to y'all. I didn't bring no notes or nothing like that. And this is the stuff that God gives to me. So, so I'm letting y'all in the closet. Hallelujah. And I'm just sharing stuff with you that God has been sharing with me for these 28 years that I've been saved. Uh, in verse 18, <laughs> and the Lord said, the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. So I'm a lonely man. Are you watching the progression? I'm a male man. I'm a created man. I'm, I'm, I'm a made man. I'm a soul man. I'm a working man. Hallelujah. But I'm a lonely man. All of these things. God had all of this uh, uh, in mind when he made us to inhabit the earth. He knew all of this stuff was going to happen. He knew Adam was going to sin. Hallelujah. Uh, he knew all of this stuff. God's not surprised by anything. Hallelujah. He don't react to nothing. Hallelujah. He already knew what you was going to do before your mama even knew who your daddy was going to be. He already knew. Hallelujah. Before you got up in the womb, he knew what you was going to look like when you came out in the womb. Hallelujah. And so God says, uh, he's going to be lonely. <laughs> so I'm a lonely man. Uh huh. I will make him a help meet for him. And 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 then don't go get no woman that come and help you do something if you ain't doing nothing. Don't go get no woman to come and help you do something if you ain't doing nothing. You got to be doing something to need some help. I, I don't need no help to do nothing. I don't need no help to be broke. I don't need no help, hallelujah, to sit up and, and be a couch potato, hallelujah. God gonna give, a, give you a woman to help you, but you got to be doing something. You got to be working. You got to have a job, hallelujah. Never seen so many. I ain't, I ain't at God's way, hallelujah. That's the name of the church in Louisiana, God's way. You know what I mean? We dropped a hammer. Uh, I'm gonna be nice, y'all. Might I'm, I'm, I want to? I want to come back. Y'all gonna let me come back tomorrow night? All right, all right, all right, all right. Watch the language. Verse 19. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what He would call them. Hallelujah! And Adam called every living creature hippopotamus, a dinosaur, whatever they were. Say, I'm a wise man. Uh, he gave him wisdom, hallelujah. Every animal up on the first of the earth, this man, he had named them, hallelujah. Where did he get that wisdom from? Where did he get that knowledge from? If it runs in the family, hallelujah. It was in his nature, hallelujah. When God downloads himself into you, when he blew, brings his real rock into you, hallelujah. There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom, hallelujah. Knowledge is just information. Wisdom is learning how to use it the right way. Is that right? Yeah. Einstein had a not, lot of knowledge. He split the atom. Hallelujah. And then them idiots got out there when they made the atomic bomb. Why didn't they just use it for atomic energy? That's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Hallelujah. But I'm a wise man. I know how to name these things. I'm a lonely man, but I still got wisdom. Hallelujah. And he named every one of them. Hallelujah. Where did he get that night? Never went to no school. Never went to no cemetery. I mean seminary. Where did he get that wisdom from? Mm -hmm. Verse 21. Chapter 2. And um, uh, who are you? We're talking about that thou. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. I'm trying to let you know what's all on the inside of you. I mean, you, you're power packed. And how, how many of you, y'all want, y'all watch the Marvel mo movies and all of those Captain America and Iron Man and all those people like that and, 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 and Thor and all of them? They're supernatural. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Hallelujah. We're naturally super. Uh, stuff that they think is really great, hallelujah, just normal for us, hallelujah. Before Adam fell, hallelujah, walking on water wasn't no thing for Adam. He just didn't know what was down on the inside of him, hallelujah. Traveling at the speed of thought out there, hallelujah, going up to the third heaven, hallelujah. That was stuff that we were created to do normally, hallelujah. We're not supernatural, hallelujah, but we're naturally super, hallelujah. We lost all of that when we gave the dominion over to the devil, hallelujah. No telling what God has in store for us to do. Say, I'm naturally super. I'm a naturally super. Man, I have to, I'm not super. Now I'm naturally super. The stuff that they think is extraordinary is just ordinary for us. Hallelujah! But we don't know that because we don't know who we are. Who are you? All of this stuff is on the inside of you. All of these billions and billions and billions of galaxies that have billions of solar systems in them. God made all of that stuff and he put his essence down on the inside of you. You sitting up in here looking just like you just a regular old person. You are a natural super person. 
You got the wisdom of God down on the inside. You can do all. I'm so glad that Paul said we can do it. I can do all things. Through. It wouldn't be nothing if God did something that's not naturally super. But I can do anything. I can do all. Say, I can do all things. I'm a naturally super person. You got to know that. You got to believe that. And you got to get bold and small. When you go out there and stroll, you got to be looking around, hallelujah, and recognize them demons, hallelujah. Do you know who you're messing with? I'm an heir. I'm a joint heir. I got God down on the inside of me, buddy. You better ask somebody. It's in my nature. I don't just have authority in the badge. I got a gun that I ain't scared to pull the trigger. I'm on there and I'm dangerous. I'll let you have it. And I'm talking about the truth. I'll let you have Jesus from hell or high water. Watch it. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs. You know, you know why they call women shorty, don't you, John? That rib he took out was a short rib. That's my shorty over there. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't want to me, hallelujah. Where your shot at, Jesus? You got up and left out, hallelujah. Uh, 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 I like them real, you know what I mean? Uh, 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 God got a sense of humor. I told you it's in my nature. I tell jokes like my daddy. What kind of first, the chicken or the egg? I'm going to tell y'all something else, too. We rule the world. Men. When God made Adam, he was pregnant. Because Eve was on the inside of him. That rib came out. Hallelujah. So man came first. Hallelujah. Uh, a woman is the mother of all the living, but where did she come from? She came about the man. Y'all know what I mean? <laughs> it all starts with the man. A Herod, he wasn't out there trying to kill no women, he was trying to kill all of them male babies. Hallelujah. They want to kill everything that puts it against the wall. Hallelujah. If you go down to the Bible, they're trying to get rid of the men. Hallelujah. Because they know if they get rid of the man, the foundation, the one that holds up everything, the one that's supposed to uphold everything, if we get rid of them, hallelujah, if we get the fathers in prisons, if we get the fathers going around having babies out of wedlock all over the place, hallelujah, we're going to have messed up families, hallelujah. So the devil is after the man, hallelujah. You don't see anywhere where he came up with a campaign to kill the women. They're always trying to get the men, hallelujah, because they know what God put down on the inside of that man, hallelujah. He put that woman down on the inside of that man, hallelujah. The first surgery, hallelujah, God performed it on a man, hallelujah, to bring shorty out. I'm so glad he brought shorty out over here. Yeah. She came out from the man. And I ain't got nothing against women. We got some stuff in there for the women, too. Not tonight, though. <laughs> so now he's a married man. Say, I'm a married man. Did you notice? God gave him a home, the earth. God gave him character. God gave him and made him a living soul. God let him go through and experience what it is to, to be like to be alone. Then God gave him wisdom. And then God made him a working man. Hallelujah. All of this before he got married. If that joker ain't got no job, if that joker don't know God the way he's supposed to know him, hallelujah, don't think that you're going to marry him and you're going to change. You ain't going to gain nobody going to change him. You're about God. Anybody ever got married and tried to change the man after they got married to him? Hallelujah. Sister Philip tried to do that. Hallelujah. And then nothing happened until we went in there and Jesus got me. Hallelujah. When I got, Brother John, when I got, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I went home. Sister Philip went there that night. She was at home. I was speeding. Filled with the Holy Ghost, breaking the law. I was speeding. Into the house, I, I ran upstairs, went in the bedroom. I said, Sh I said, Sharon, I got the Holy Ghost. She said, Oh, that's so good. Honey. <laughs> and so, uh, I, I, being raised in the South, my mama said, I, so, it's, so when she got say, I looked at my hand and they looked no, I looked at my feet and they did too. I ran in the bathroom, put my shoes off and put my foot up there. Hallelujah. I said, that's the, I said, that's the same old foot. 
it, it don't it don't look new. I still got the same that bunion over there. Hallelujah. But all of a sudden I realized, hallelujah. But I, I, I realized that ain't no other foot like that ever walked on earth. Hallelujah. I started realizing uh, uh, it didn't look different, but the way I was seeing it was different. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you ever get to the point where uh, I used to marvel at the man that built the Golden Gate Bridge. I used to marvel at the man, hallelujah, that put the space shuttle out there in the space station. But now I marvel at the mind of the man, hallelujah, that uh, uh, I used to marvel at the mind of the man that made all this stuff. Now I marvel at God that made the mind of the man that made all this stuff. <laughs> it's not about how I look, it's about how I see. I started seeing things different. My foot was the same one. Same, it looked the same way, hallelujah. But I looked at it different. It ain't always about the way you look. It's about the way you see. I see things a little different now. If you do it God's way, you're going to do all that stuff before you get married. Trouble with a lot of us is we do it, we do it all backwards and sideways and crooked and try to figure out why I didn't it didn't it, you know God can always come in and straighten stuff out. But wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to get nothing straight if you got it straight from the get go? <laughs> you got a blueprint right here for you. Say so do it God's way. Hallelujah. And if I miss the mark, hallelujah, God got a remedy, he can fix it up. Hallelujah. Now, we're gonna talk about that tomorrow night. Say so reconciliation. We consile. Consile means uh, 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 to make one consolidation loans to make one reconciliation means I'm going to bring you back to the beginning like you used to be I'm going to get reconnected with you that's the next message hallelujah but he became a married man then he sinned and he became a sinful man and we'll get into that. That's part of the message for tomorrow. Uh, but be, be, before he became a sinful man, he, he he was a scared man. He used to run the he used to run and hear God's voice coming down through the garden in the cool of the day. He run out there, God, what's going on? What are we gonna do today? What you gonna teach to me today? As soon as he sinned, he ran and hid from God. So he became a scared man, married and scared. Hallelujah. Bill collectors come to the house. My daddy used to do this, get behind the door. Mammy tell him I ain't here. Why, you gonna get my mama to go up here and lie to the man and tell him you ain't here? Ain't you the man of the house? Mama said, I ain't gonna do it no more. Herman, that's my middle name. Herman, go up there and tell that man. I said, my daddy said he ain't here. He over there and he told me to tell you he ain't here. If you're a man, be a man, dad, I was eight years old. Daddy was looking at me like I was crazy. What are you going to do? Beat you up? I ain't got the money. I'm not here with the money that is. So he became a sinful man. God kicked him out the garden. He was a lost man. And then in, con in that condition, then he, he got together with Eve and she conceived and he became a family man. Dysfunctional family. First son killed his second son. First murder, dysfunctional family. Hallelujah. Because they came, he was no longer in the likeness of God. Hallelujah. He still had that same image. He looked the way that he did before. Hallelujah. But that DNA was separated. Hallelujah. The spirit had become separated from the soul. Hallelujah. And he was over here. He was all out there. He thought he was lonely before he met Eve, bro. But after he, he got separated from God, he, he was a real lonely man. Any lonely man in the house. Hallelujah. But God got a remedy. God got a remedy. We can do all things. I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. Hmm. Funny thing. Adam and Eve and the devil. The devil over there talking to Eve. Got a lot of pretty women up in her job. The devil come over there. And the devil was, he, he, he was a good looking, good looking dude. He said, no, they're talking to Eve, right? My wife liked big old roebuck looking men. Like that dude back there in the purple shirt that was up here leading the choir. She liked, she, she, she liked them kind of nigg niggeros. If he come down there on that sleet and start, she right there and start sliding over there talking to Eve, talking to my wife, hallelujah. I'm not going to sit up here and don't say nothing. I'm going to say, hey, hold up, buddy. That's my wife. That's, that's my shot, rib. Go get your own rib. Leave her alone. 
brother was talking to Eve and he was talking back to him and Adam sitting over there and ain't said nothing. That's what's wrong with the church right now. Men won't say nothing. Silent men killing the church. Silent men killing the family. Hallelujah. Stop up here and try to talk to my wife if you want to. You got to hear from me. Hallelujah. When that devil come over and he trying to talk to your wife or talk to your kids, speak up and say something. Say something so I won't give up on you. Say something. Don't sit back and let them go to hell in a handbasket. Say something. Wish one of my kids come around. We'll come around vaping. <laughs> Say something. Don't be hiding behind the door. Go up there and tell him, I ain't got your money. And don't be coming over here trying to talk to my wife and get, and get the money from her. I made the bill. Hallelujah. I'm responsible. I hold up this house over here. The weight is on my shoulders. Hallelujah. I'll pay for it. I get behind on my rent. I'm going to go talk to the landlord. I ain't sending my wife to do that stuff. That's my responsibility. I'm a responsible man. That's who you are. Everything about God is not only available to you. You know what DNA stands for? For people that ain't saved, his divine nature is available. Once he comes down on the inside of you as the Holy Ghost, now his divine nature is activated. And once you start living something and start speaking and, and walking around and doing what God told you to do, now his divine nature is active. That's what the DNA stands for. Is his divine nature active, active in you? Apostolicity is a behavior. It's a tradition of the apostolic church. Hallelujah. Are you standing on that? Are you telling people what you're supposed to be telling? Don't just talk about it. When you get through talking about it, walk about it. Start doing some jaywalking. We got a thing back home. We call it jaywalking. I'm jaywalking for Jesus. I'm going to tell him what that said the Lord. Every step I take, I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm going to be about it. I'm a soul man. I'm a family man. I'm a married man. I ain't scared no more because now I got the Holy Ghost. And the Lord did not give me the spirit of fear. He gave me the power of love and a sound mind. He gave me a gun. And the gun that I got is the gospel. Hallelujah. And I ain't afraid to pull the trigger on nobody. It's 9 o'clock. That's enough. Part 2 tomorrow. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Here, this is for you. Hallelujah. Before y'all get carried away, I have not talked to him about nothing. That's the Holy Ghost. See, Sister Sharon, that was part two of my Sunday message. Now, did, now oh, hallelujah. Ain't, much, ain't nothing for me to say. Y'all want prayer? Come on, ministers. Amen. See, y'all think I'm the only one hard on the men. Now tell me he didn't say, tell me the Holy Ghost didn't preach this Sunday, just said it. We both cooked chicken. One was barbecue, and the other one was what? Baked. But it was both chicken. Different flavor. Listen, God is ready to help us. He's telling us to do our job. I like that job. And working. Oh, hallelujah. We in for a treat this week, y'all. Amen. I think he started out with the dessert. You ever, you ever ate the dessert first? And then you come back and eat the meals? Anybody want prayer? Come on, come on, come on. Anybody want prayer? I'm not going to get up and preach because I'm, I'm going home with this. I'm going home with this. Working man, soul man, male man, married man, wise man, scared man. I ain't no scared man, though. No. Didn't I tell y'all about being afraid? Get that fear. Get that fear. Get that, get that fear away. And I, didn't I tell y'all that Adam let that woman sit there and talk to that devil? He should have warned and said, baby, get. Oh, hallelujah. Nobody want prayer? Because we can go home. Nobody want prayer? So y'all are soul woman, soul man, male man, male woman, and all that. Y'all got all of that? 
Amen. Because we can go home. Y'all know I ain't, I ain't long on altar calls. Because if you ain't got it, if you ain't convicted and need help right away, you don't, you don't want it. You don't want it. You don't want it. Hallelujah. Wise. Wise man. God is good, isn't he? God is good. I told y'all, man is responsible for everything. And when we mess up, everything gets messed up. Amen. Now I know why we like short ribs so much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm saved. Glad I'm saved. I got, a, I got a lot to take with me home tonight after this message. I like it when a preacher come in and help me. When you help me, I'm good. Amen. Revival is always thought of revival is for the pastor anyway. Y'all just happen to come in here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Y'all don't want prayer? Come on back tomorrow night. Amen. Part two. Hallelujah. I'm coming back ready for part two. Amen. 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 God sent us a good revivalist. God sent us a good revivalist for this week. And I'm going to enjoy it. 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 Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good, 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 good. Huh? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What 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 he say? It's in me. I got the, hey, it's in me. I, I like I already see where he's going. If y'all spiritual, y'all can see it. That's what makes it more exciting. You want to see how he's gonna get there. Amen. Hallelujah. It's in me. It's in us to love. It's we made to love. But I ain't gonna say nothing. I don't wanna I don't wanna I'm gonna let him tell it because he got another way to say it. And I want to hear it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are y'all excited? Did y'all get excited? Hey, Amen. I should have got excited from this. Don't, don't, don't worry because they don't shout. They, they like listening. They, they hear you. Trust me. They hear you. They don't want to miss nothing. Because we know you get to shout and you'll miss something. I don't want to miss nothing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let us stand. I don't want to miss nothing. I don't want to miss nothing. Amen. God is good. God is good. So everything that was in Jesus and in God is in us. So it's time for us to use it. Amen. And the preacher is going to tell us how to get in line and start using it all this week. Amen. Father God, in the precious, wonderful name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord. Father, you're good. You're just good. You're just good. And we thank you because you put everything that's in you, you put it in us. You made us in your image. You want us to love. You want us to work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You want us to perform the responsibilities and the duties that you've allotted us, Lord God. So we just thank you, Father. We thank you for the speaker that you sent to us this week, Lord God. Father, just, just keep on blessing him. Father, give him strength for the week, Lord God. Give him strength. Give him just, just, just keep him pumped with whatever you have for us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Remove all obstacles that could have come his way this week. Protect his wife. To protect him. Protect their home. Give them nothing to worry about, Lord God, from this day forth. Not just this week. Don't give them no more worries, Lord God, because he's doing what you called him to do. He's working. He's not on a job. He's working. He's doing what you called him to do, Father. So we thank you for strengthening him. We thank you for lifting him up. We thank you for holding him up. We thank you for the wisdom and knowledge. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for giving him a wife to be by his side and encourage him. As We thank you, Lord God, for sending them to us this week. 
thank you for what you've given us on this night, Lord God. Thank you for what you got prepared for us all this week. And thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for bringing us back on tomorrow with the joy, with the joy of the love of your word down in our soul. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.